Yes. Welcome, everybody. Cannabis News with Joe Claire is October 31st, 2018. Happy Halloween to all of you out there who celebrate Halloween. Obviously, for those of you who don't, it's just the last day of the month, and you're not really worried about it. I know the majority of you, you like the candy. I don't care how old you are. You're out there. You're 45 years old. You're, you're in full costume. You're getting the candy. I understand. I understand. I've been there with you. Solidarity. In any case, happy Halloween, everyone. Cannabis News brought to you, of course, by the Marijuana Times, presented by the Marijuana Times. Check us out at marijuanatimes.org today. We're talking about four states preparing some sort of marijuana legalization vote next week. We also have uh, some more from Smart Approach to Marijuana. I really don't talk about that much, but uh, it's fun every now and then to kind of bring them up, you know, point out their hypocrisy, and then, you know, push them back under, you know, whatever rock that they're, you know, very expensive rock that they're hiding under. And uh, also new regulations coming to Colorado. We'll talk about those coming up. But of course, first I must tell you about our awesome sponsor, NatureSide. Nature-Side.com, their organic, all-natural pesticides will help you be regulatory compliant in the state that you are growing in. Grow safe and poison-free. Don't use harmful chemicals on your grow. Don't use banned pesticides. Check out NatureSide. Nature-Side.com. Side is spelled C-I-D-E. They're awesome. They're a sponsor of Cannabis News. Go check them out. This first story from Julia Granowitz at MarijuanaTimes.org. These four states are preparing to vote on legalizing cannabis. Of course, uh, we've talked a lot about these states over the last several months. Of course, Michigan is voting on Proposal 1, which is recreational legalization with pretty some robust limits, including two and a half ounces of when it comes to possession, uh, North Dakota is voting on Measure 3. There are really no limits on that. Uh, it's uh, adult use legalization. And uh, the polls that I've seen, the polls I've seen from Michigan are solid. The polls I've seen from North Dakota are about as far apart as you can get. I've seen 59% against, 64% against. I've seen 51% for. I've seen other uh, uh, numbers in the 50s for the measure. There's no way to know what's going to happen in North Dakota. If I'm making predictions right now, I'm going to say Michigan's going to pass. I'm undecided on North Dakota. Uh, Utah, the medical marijuana bill, the compromise that's been struck there is kind of taking the wind out of the sails, uh, to use an analogy. Uh, it's, uh, it's just, or, or, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. Whatever the legislature does after the vote, win or lose, is what's going to dictate what medical marijuana is in Utah. And that sucks. I mean, if I lived in Utah, I would still go vote for it. But, I mean, it's not going to matter. What the legislature is going to do what they're going to do, regardless of how people vote in Utah on November 6th. If I had to make a prediction for that, I would say it's going to fail. I think it's just the compromise is just crushed. Plus the, this several-month-long assault from various aspects of the Church of Latter-day Saints, a.k.a. the Mormon Church, against this measure. Against people... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. How can you say you're part of a church? Claim to be compassionate. Whatever. I don't know. I mean, maybe the Mormons don't claim to be compassionate. I have no idea. But if they do, how can you say to someone, well, I know you're sick. You got an ailment. You got PTSD. You got uh, cancer. You have uh, arthritis in, in, you know, in, in parts of your body that, that gives you pain. Uh, you can't sleep. Uh, you want you got, we got pills, you got plenty of pills, got lots of side effects. I know some people, a lot of people die on them, you take a little bit too much. But if you want to try marijuana, you want some medical marijuana, you want that choice, uh, they can look at you in the eye, or at least they can say publicly that no, that's not, no, no. We, uh, we don't want you to have that choice. We don't want you to have your choice of medicine. I, I can't relate to that. I have no idea. Uh, Missouri is voting on medical marijuana. And that, ah, there's three measures. They're all different. Uh, two are constitutional amendments. Constitutional amendments. Uh, one's not. Uh, Amendment 2 and 3 and Proposition C would all legalize production, distribution, and consumption of medical marijuana. But the list of qualifying conditions vary, as well as the amounts of medicine that individuals could keep at home and the potential of having home cult cultivation as an option. Even if 54% of Missouri voters think Medical marijuana should be legal. It may come down to not enough votes for any one measure to pass. So obviously they could all fail. One could pass, two could pass, three can pass. And then there's a, they battle it out. Uh, it's As I've said before on the show, it seems a really inefficient way 
to legalize medical marijuana. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. These three groups, and listen, I'm not part of these groups. I haven't talked to any of these groups, but it seems to me that my top priority would be getting together with the other two, and apparently these two have like they've launched lawsuits to each other and ads against each other. It would be in your interest to everybody to get together, make a good, robust medical marijuana bill, and get it passed. Muster all your support and put it in one direction. Instead, instead they've splintered support throughout the state, and I wouldn't be surprised if all three fail. Of poll numbers have looked good for all three. A couple of them have been a little shaky, but I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. You can't, and I hope I hope I'm proven wrong on election day. But it seems to me you can't divide your support in that way, where you have people going to the polls and voting on one and voting against the other two, or voting on two and voting against one, or voting. Uh, I, I don't know. It just seems a bad way to do it. Again, my opinion. It's what I'm here for. It's next story from MarijuanaMoment.net. Anti-marijuana group wants mandatory assessment. For consumers, of course, that anti-marijuana group is the one we all love. Smart approaches to marijuana. SAM. A new document uploaded to SAM's website last week. The group lays out, quote, several key points to be addressed in model legislation for cannabis in the state level. Something they've apparently been talking about for quite a long time. Uh, about giving out the details of. And they just now got around to it. They're very busy. Building new offices. They're, you know, raising tons of money. It's for so Kevin Sabat can go around the country making speeches and getting and, and making tons of moolah. That's right, I said moolah. Duckets, mad chatter. I don't know what you want to call it. He's raking in the dough. In any case, the this is one of the uh, re, uh, requirements. Quote: Require mandatory assessment of public problem drug use, <clears throat> cannabis use. By a treatment professional after the first citation, those who are diagnosed with a substance use disorder can be diverted into a treatment track where they receive the appropriate level of care. First of all, mandatory assessment, and then they're diagnosed with substance use disorder. Whoever diagnoses that, they can be diverted into a treatment track. Mandatory marijuana rehab, which has always been a lot of the people who fund SAM are rehabilitation centers. If they get the weed smokers into rehabilitation, if they get it caught, well, that, that's some moolah. That is some cheddar. And all of the other slang words I used for currency earlier. In any case, um, even if it's determined a person is not a problem user, they still get directed to social services to uh, dig into other life factors. Um, it says social services, uh, they be diverted, to, directed to social services for follow up and addressing other life factors contributing to drug use. And why are you, why are you using marijuana? Why are, why are you, uh, even though it's not a problem, you know, if you're not, we don't consider you a problem user, but in, just in case, we want to talk to you about what's going on. Have a seat, man, buddy, pal. Tell me what's going on. Why do you feel the need to turn to marijuana when there are so many wonderful legal prescription drugs that that you can partake of. Why? Why have you chosen cannabis when there's... Have you heard of Percocets? I mean, come on. Stuff, stuff's amazing, right? The, 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 forget the weed. Whatever's bothering you, get some pills. Is that... I mean, is that what they're going to tell these people? What else are they going to tell them? They should Meditate. We're not a problem user, but we want to talk to you about it nonetheless. Thank you, Smart Approaches for Marijuana. You're really, you're, you guys are, you guys are killing it. This next story is from westward.com. Out of Colorado, four Colorado weed industry rules that are about to change. Um, apparently, the industry's watchdog, the State Marijuana Enforcement Division, updates its rules and regulations every year. Of course, uh, marijuana is a fast growing industry, and they're trying to keep up. Uh, on October 16th, the Marijuana Enforcement Division held its last stakeholder meeting before new rules would be introduced. Uh, some of those rules include new regulations that would require every batch, every harvest batch of medical and recreational cannabis to be tested for heavy metals, including but not limited to arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury. While the MED says heavy metal testing requirements have been in place for a couple of years, testing was never mandated, but that could change on July 1st, 2018 if these new final rules are uh, 
enacted nasal sprays, inhalers, and suppositories. Um, the producers of those things, when uh, Med suggested back in July, those non-conforming products would soon have to adhere to FDA-like standards of efficacy and could be kicked off dispensary shelves for months or even years as manufacturers got their facilities and manufacturing plans approved. After stakeholder engagement, however, the MED decided instead to label such products as, quote, audited and, quote, alternative use. If the new language is adopted, they'll have to be inspected and approved by an independent certified quality audit. Uh, other regulations that could change is waste recycling. Uh, both marijuana and hemp stalks can be recycled for their pulp and fibers, which can then be used to help make extremely efficient and durable building materials, paper, clothing, and more. However, licensed cannabis cultivators were barred from attempting to recycle any waste from their plants, including the stalks and stems, for some inexplicable reason. Uh, especially now, nowadays, I thought recycling was, I mean, I thought we all agreed that we're going to, you know, recycling was, was something we're going to try to do. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Uh, but Bill HB 187 passed and became law this summer, giving the Med the authority to allow cannabis growers, quote, Transfer marijuana fibrous waste to a person for the purpose of producing only industrial fiber products. In other, in other words, you know, using uh, the waste. Another regulation that could change uh, is the requirement for vertical integration, meaning that dispensaries have to grow or uh, source at least 70% of their products internally. Uh, they'll be able to uh, use more wholesalers, which, will, of course, will make more, uh, bring more choice and uh, will bring down prices and increase quality as competition always does so some of that's some of the things to look forward to in Colorado. Of course, all the articles I talk about and all the stories I talk about on Cannabis News are linked in the description of the video in which they are discussed. Thank you everyone for checking out the show again. Happy Halloween! If you haven't gone trick or treating yet, be safe and uh, you know, check out Nature Side, of course, sponsor nature side.com, organic all natural pesticides. Check out marijuanatimes.org. Click the video tab there to find the show. There's also a bunch of great articles there and more. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting on the videos and helping us spread the truth about cannabis through this show. Thank you for checking out this episode. We'll see you next time right here on Cannabis News. (laughs) 